So today's topic, I plan to deliver with a good bit of experiential opportunities for you as the viewer. And I hope that you can participate in that. If by chance you find this topic on a recording later, then I invite you to follow the prompts in the recording to do your own experiential musings and wonderings and noticings within yourself to find your spiritual resources. That's the goal of this talk, that we leave you with a way to find your own resources inside of your heart. So why are we even talking about spiritual resources connected with mental health? I wanted to share just a few reasons that's out there in this spiritually integrated psychotherapy curriculum that I use that I think is important for us to remember. Why spirituality? Why spiritual resources connected with mental health? So number one, many of our clients report being spiritual and or religious. If you look back at many of the Gallup polls, they'll let you know that over 59% of Americans say religion is very important in their lives. And another 29% say religion is fairly important. There are multiple studies out there to support this understanding of our culture in America. Number two, the role of mental health professionals is expanding. Although most Americans say spirituality and religion are important to them, fewer are connecting directly with a religious leader, such as a priest or a rabbi or a pastor, for their guidance in their spiritual growth and understanding. More people happen to be turning to their mental health professionals as the wisdom figure in their lives. Number three, many clients want to talk about their spirituality and religion in therapy. We have clients coming to Insight that ask, can we talk about this? I've had some other experiences where the therapist said, go talk to your pastor, but I, I wanna talk with a therapist about this. I think they're connected. Hmm, well, that's what we're talking about, it's how they're connected. A fourth reason is that spirituality and religion are linked to psychological functioning. There are so many studies on this that note the beneficial connection between spirituality and psychological health. Some of those topics are spirituality and religion can positively affect, affect our ability to handle stress, to find happiness, to find purpose and meaning, to recover from substance abuse disorders, to find peace, after the death of our loved one, our major shift in our life, or just looking at ourselves in midlife and saying, I don't think I like who I am now. Religion and spirituality often are resources for us in these moments. We also know it can go the other way. Spirituality can negatively impact our psychological functioning, especially with the experience of spiritual or religious wounding or abuse. The fifth reason that we're connecting spiritual resources with this topic of finding your abundance is that mental health professionals are embracing cons consideration of a patient's spirituality and religion in their regular assessments. This is happening more and more in hospitals and doctor's offices that part of the assessment considers the, the patient's um, spiritual and religious a resource or activity in their life. And this also becomes part of the recommendation format for many therapists, um, excuse me, for many physicians. It's a good thing for therapists to get on a physician's call list so that we can provide this part of care for their clients. So to summarize these reasons, spirituality and religion can be sources of strength for many clients. Sometimes as well, it can be part of the problem. Spirituality and religion inform clients' values and their ways of making meaning, both of which often play a large part in the work that unfolds in therapy. So as we move further along in this talk, I think it would be helpful for us to talk about and clarify 
what is meant by spiritual? What is meant by spirituality? Because we uh, acknowledge that, that spirituality can be a large resource for wellness for our clients and ourselves, what do we mean by that? Russell Siler Jones, in his book, Spirit in Session, says that spirituality is something that happens. It's something we experience, something that affects us, something that we feel. So I'm going to invite you to participate now in this webinar. Let's start making a sense of spirituality by describing our experience of spiritual. So I will ask you a few questions and you are invited to put a brief response in the chat. This way we will come to this group's experiential description of spiritual. I will pause about 30 seconds after each question. And then Abby, I will ask you if you would read these responses out after the uh, completion of question four. So let me find my timer so I can really watch 30 seconds. So first question, what does spirituality feel like to you? Second question, what tells you that an experience you are having is spiritual? How do you know when it's spiritual? Third question, when and where do spiritual experiences happen for you? And final question, how do these experiences affect you? What difference do they make that you have them? Thank you all for participating. So kind of, uh, Carol, as I understand it, this is kind of a portrait of what spirituality is for the group that's with us today. Yes. So we look back through what we've said in response to those questions. It's openness, connection with God, um, experiencing it in nature or in deep conversation everywhere the still small voice in little everyday occurrences. It gives me a sense that I'm part of something larger than just me. No, I'm not carrying life's burdens alone. Providing, provide healing in a sense of awareness. Absolutely. So we recognize when we do conversations or have conversations about spirituality, that really the descriptions of our spiritual experience are as nuanced as each of us are as persons. Um, when we pull it all together, the, what distills from most of the uh, conversations that are had around what is spiritual is that spirituality refers to an inward personal experience and in that experience, if we sit in it open-heartedly, the human heart will often find that they are accompanied or they will reach 
to be accompanied by a larger, wiser, other, life source, God, an encounter with the sacred. So spirituality then refers to an inward personal experience that embodies or carries or allows an encounter with the sacred, however you name your sacred. So Abby asked me as I was preparing this talk to say just a little bit about what is spiritually integrated psychotherapy. So I thought this would be a good place to put that in here. Spiritually integrated psychotherapy seeks to facilitate this conversation that is spiritual, not from the therapist lens of spirituality, but from the client's experiential knowing of spirituality. And why is this important? It is understood, it's a foundational presupposition of spiritually integrated psychotherapy that the spiritual aspect of this complex being each of us are is the glue or the thread or the energy that connects our personhood all together. It integrates us. We are not just physical, emotional, cognitive, and social beings. We are physical, emotional, cognitive, social, and spiritual beings. And these aspects of ourselves are all interrelated. So spiritually integrated psychotherapy is a modality of treatment that respects and honors all of those aspects of personhood, many other modalities of treatment, and listens deeply for the spiritual component in the person hoping to bring that spiritual component to bear in service of healing and wholeness for the person. So where do we begin in spiritually integrated psychotherapy? We begin at the same place that most other therapeutic modalities begin, finding the resources the client is aware of and strengthening those to promote healing and abundance. That's why we're talking about spiritual resources today. Spiritual resources can sound spiritual or not. They can be connected with a religious group or not. And they can be an internal resource, something we walk around with us all the time, or an external resource. So what is a spiritual resource? Well, since there are so many, and it depends on each of you as an individual, each of us as individuals, really it can be distilled down to anything that helps us survive and thrive. A spiritual resource is one that can help us make it through the survival to the other side where thriving is available. This is buried in all of us, as buried possibly as a different watershed moment that we have experienced in our lives. By watershed, I mean one of those really life clarifying or life changing moments. It could be a time such as when a decision became clear, our moment of joy or peace flooded our being, or an experience of grief marked the significance of the loss. What facilitated the clarity or the joy or the peace or the significance? What sustained through the grief or the sorrow or the despair? That is the spiritual resource that's already embedded in us. Now, I'm gonna invite you to participate again. I'm going to invite you to think about a difficult time in your life. And with a caveat on that, this is a, a 
uh, at best, something similar to a telehealth meeting, but it's not face-to-face -face with all of you. So I'm not inviting you to go to your deepest traumatic experience here. That's for another place in time. But I am inviting you to consider a difficult time that you made it through, a time you've already made it all the way through. So that as you think about that time, what helped you get through that? What sustained you to get through that difficult time? I'm gonna give you a moment and just invite you to share what you're already aware of that is a resource in you that helps sustain you through a difficult moment. Are you willing to type it in the chat? If you are, then Abby, I invite you to read them out loud as they show up this time. A uh, resource, uh, actually seeking counsel from a therapist. Um, Thank you, whoever yeah. put that up there. Yeah. <laughs> um, difficult times were death of father, husband's heart attack and job loss um, had faith that God would guide us through those times and he did. Um, I also have a strong support network. So taking walks in nature often helps me in difficulties. Uh, talking with close friends and family, it's again that network. Listening to sermons, songs, talking with spiritually minded family and friends. I'm sensing a theme here, <laughs> some of these resources. Yeah, and, um, thank you all for participating. So one of the things that spiritually integrated psychotherapy would help with at this moment, and we're gonna participate in that again, this time, not necessarily for you to type in the chat, but just to serve you. But one of the things that we could do would be to help you deepen that existing spiritual resource. The one you've already found that has helped you through something else can be deepened and then build resilience for you as you face other difficult times in your life. So if you're willing, I'm going to guide you through um, a mindfulness exercise to help deepen that resource for you that you've already named. So if you found yourself naming more than one on the chat, I'll invite you to pick one. But before we go there, we've been sitting here a few minutes. You need to shift yourself in your seat. You take a deep breath or two. And just do a light body scan. Notice any place in your body that feels tense or tight. Stretch or flex muscles in that area to release the tension. Just take another deep breath. Now, as you settle in, I invite you to close your eyes if that serves you to focus. Focus softly on something in front of you if you want to keep your eyes open. And I invite you to think about that resource which sustained you through that difficult time. Focus on the experience of being sustained and stay with that for a moment. As you consider being sustained in that moment, do you notice anything in your body a feeling, a sensation, a tightness, a tingling, a warmth, anything. Stay with 
whatever has bubbled up in your body. And breathe. Now I invite you to hold whatever showed up in your body alongside your experience of being sustained. And notice and breathe the two together. And as you're noticing, I have a question for you. Is there an emotion that's bubbling up as well. Just notice it, let it come, and name it. So as you remember that sustained experience and you've located it in your body in a sensation and you've named an emotion, I wonder, is there a message in that for you? Something that serves your sense of being sustained being resilient, what's the message? Just let it come and breathe. So I'm going to invite you to, to uh, open your eyes if you have a way to take a note or two about your experience. And I invite you to jot down something, the sensation, the emotion, the message. In the midst of that, you may have located another spiritual resource for yourself that can bring you sustenance and resilience. Just take a moment to jot down. We just utilize the spiritual intervention of mindfulness to deepen a spiritual resource that you already have. Other spiritual interventions that can develop, deepen, or discover spiritual resources can include meditation, guided imagery, prayer, use of sacred texts, altruism, giving back to your community, gratitude and expression of praise or thanksgiving, the arts, expressing all of that on canvas, our written word, our sculpture, connecting with close friends or support network, many others. You probably notice that many of these interventions are also considered spiritual practices in formal religious uh, discipleship programs. They can be that for you, housed within your formal religious life, or they can be just a best practice for resilience for you. Wherever you are in your spiritual journey, 
is where that can still assist you, come alongside you and aid you. So we explored a spiritual resource that sustained through a difficult time. We have a moment more that we can take to explore a different um, intervention to find a resource from your cloud of witnesses that surround you already. People that you know, are convinced of, that love you. They may still be alive and actively in your life. They may be already passed, but you know that that relationship was sustaining when it was here and your memories of that relationship and that person still sustain you. Often utilizing a resource like this can help you make a difficult decision. So that is, that is one reason that um, Lisa Miller wrote up um, our adapted, a guided imagery called Hosting Council. This imagery is found in the book, The Spiritual Child. We're going to just take about 10 minutes with that, and then we will we, um, be close to the finish of our time. But if you're willing, we'll do one more experiential thing. Here again, you're not necessarily asked to respond in the chat. This is a gift to you, an opportunity for you to find more of your resilience through a spiritual resource. So. At this time, I invite you um, to just um, get comfortable where you are sitting. Take a few deep breaths and invite your body to relax once more. Don't fall asleep, though. Just relax. Laugh if you need. It may help you. Notice the way the chair is supporting you. Notice your feet on the floor. Notice the in and out of your breath. And just let your breath clear a space inside of you for your inner being to be warmed and open and welcoming. In this imagery, I invite you to sit at a table. Notice the table before you in your imagination. Now invite to this table everyone who truly has your best interest in mind. As I said, these could be people alive and active in your life or that have passed on. Anyone you feel truly has or has had your best interest in mind. As they come, ask them, do they love you? Now invite your innermost self, your eternal self, higher self, best self, that part of you that is beyond you even, beyond this moment, that part of you that has always been with you and will be you. Invite that deep you to your table. And ask yourself, do you love me? Mm -hmm. 
Now invite to your table, God, your higher power, your life source, the breath that sustains you. Invite that being to your table. And ask that being higher than you, the other, do you love me? Now with everyone right there assembled at your table, Ask them what right now is important for you to know. What do they need to tell you right now about you, about your decision, about the path choice that is before you? What do you need to know and what can they tell you? Just sit and receive their gift and notice. Breathe it in. Welcome it with curiosity. Welcome it from your love for them. Now I invite you to slowly and gently take out whatever you were making notes on and to take some notes about a couple of follow-up questions from the imagery that I'm gonna ask you. First, who showed up at your table? Name them. Secondly, the invitation is to consider, is there anything about what happened that you would like to remember, remember, and possibly share with a friend or family member, someone who gets you and loves you, maybe someone that was at your table? Make a note about what you would like to remember or to share. Both are invitations. All are invitations. Thank you for participating. I hope that it 
was a gift for you. So we've explored an internal spiritual resource with the mindfulness exercise on being sustained. The guided imagery was an internal process, yet the resources brought to mind could possibly be external in the living people in your support network. It helps in spiritually integrated psychotherapy to take note of what is an internal spiritual resource for our clients and what is an external spiritual resource. It seems that wholeness, sense of health, sense of abundance flows when we have a multiple types of resources. So noting where there may be a need to shore up the types of resources we have is another intervention that we offer in spiritually integrated psychotherapy. So whatever spiritual resources you discover, develop, or deepen, they will always get stronger and more helpful for you as you use them. Which brings us to the very last topic we will touch on briefly and then make some space for some of your questions if you have any. Oh, and this uh, topic is how can we help ourselves make more space for or get more out of our spiritual resources? So we all know the obvious answer, right? Practice, 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 practice makes perfect. We know that answer. How do we get ourselves to do that? Well, there are many trainings out there on how to develop a new practice, how to get it going, how to get it to be sustainable, and how to keep it going, how to maintain it. Generally, some of the course of how that happens is to first see the need for it. I need something new. To have a need that we're going to try to meet is often the first motivator to try to meet a need. We got to find it. And then often the next step is setting an intention. I'm, I'm going to find this. And then once we found it or found an idea to set another intention on, okay, I'm going to do this. Often to set an intention, it helps us to set a place. I'm going to do this thing here. And to set a time. I'm going to do this thing on this point on my daily schedule. Maybe to set a reminder on the schedule. Yeah. But this will help some of us develop the pattern of engaging our spiritual resources. And then there are those among us who will resist the routine and instead, uh, maybe they need to be more spontaneous in their practicing of their spiritual resources. You know, if that is what helps you, then here's another idea. Consider that when you come up against the need for a new spiritual resource the next time, you use that need you've come up against to kind of catapult you into practicing the new idea that you have come upon. Just do it in the moment. It may help you in that moment. Um, the Insight Leadership Team has recently found some resource to help ourselves in the moment in a grounding exercise. It's very simple, but often a grounding exercise can help us when we get dysregulated, when we get overwhelmed, when we get so emotionally charged that we know, oh my goodness, I either can't make a choice, I can't see the path forward, or I got too many options. And I'm flooded with what's going on in me, and I'm about to explode. 
something that can help us take that down just a moment can be as simple as rubbing two fingers together and noticing what the tips of your fingers feel like to each other. And just do that. And breathe. Notice. You can notice for 30 seconds. You've got yourself the fastest grounding technique I've heard about. That's a spontaneous one that I'm offering you. If you find the need to be spontaneous, just notice something around you and focus on it intensely for 30 seconds, either in your body or outside your body, and breathe. And that may help you. And then you may find that you can set an intention to do that kind of exercise for a longer period of time and see what it brings you. That will be your new resource. Name whatever is brought. And maybe even before you get there, if you're spontaneous, name what blocked you. If you name it out loud, it might be that you find inside you some compassion for accepting it and befriending it, and in that way, find a door through it. I hope those ideas, brief but concise, help you. However you go about engaging your spiritual resources, individually with a friend, with a therapist, another spiritual guide, whatever spiritual resources can help you survive and thrive in a time of mental, emotional distress. I hope you find them. It is our prayer that you will be helped to rediscover your abundance through their use. <laughs>